All right, everybody, good late afternoon. We've got another injury report, and things have certainly changed. Mostly changed for the better, which you expect as you go through the week, but uh, definitely changed. So we're going to take a look at this. I uh, got it from Brady Henderson today. But uh, yeah, the Thursday practice report, it looks like things are headed in the right direction for most players. Not everybody, but mostly we're looking pretty good here. And I'll uh, just go ahead and say this, though. Washington is about as clean as clean can be. We'll get to that at the uh, end of the video. But uh, let's take a look here. Uh, again, from Brady Henderson, we have four did not participate players. We have three limited participation players. And then you've got nine guys who were, who were full participants. So that is definitely a big step in the right direction. Um, did not participate. So this is the stuff we kind of have to worry about right now. Uh, we got Jordan Brooks. This is the second day in a row. Obviously, Jordan Brooks is a player that we're giving a lot of rest in practice this year because he's coming off the major injury, but I don't think we've given him Wednesday and Thursday off that much this year, so this is a little bit concerning now. He did get hurt in that Ravens game. I know he went back in, but this is at least a little bit concerning now. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I'm not getting any indi any indication that he won't play, but it has to at least be a possibility. So that's a little concerning. Also concerning would be Anthony Bradford. He did not participate after being limited on Wednesday. That's what we call heading in the wrong direction. So at that point, at, excuse me, at this point, I look at Anthony Bradford and I go, he may not be available this week. Um, looking at Phil Haynes to hopefully have a bounce back game, looking at Phil Haynes to be the guy until we get Bradford back. And he may continue to be the guy after Bradford gets back. Don't get me wrong. As of right now, Bradford is a backup, but, um, at the same time, Phil Haynes has proven that he's very injury prone. So having Bradford available is always valuable. So this is, uh, not what we want. But uh, yeah, headed in the wrong direction there. These last two, I'm not really sweating. We got Mario Edwards Jr. resting. He's a veteran. That's what you do with your veteran players sometimes. DK Metcalf with a hip. Um, he wasn't even listed yesterday. So I'm, I'm taking this as a glorified rest day for DK. So not worried about Mario. Not worried about DK. I think both those guys are going to be fine for this upcoming game. So it's really just these first two guys that I'm wondering about just a little bit. But uh, again, we will know more tomorrow. Limited. We had three guys limited. Like I said, DJ Dallas headed the right way after a DNP on Wednesday. He did participate in a limited form today. Again, if he misses this game, it's not the end of the world because we can take a look at McIntosh. But... Um, We'd obviously prefer to have the guys that we view as our best guys. And DJ Dallas, um, trending in the right direction. Also trending in the right direction was Colby Parkinson, who was limited after missing practice on Wednesday. So he's probably on track to play. He may not be 100%. That's very possible. But um, who is really at this point? So that's good news. And then you have Charles Cross, who maintains his uh, limited availability. So... The reality is Charles Cross for the rest of this year is probably going to play, but I don't think he's 100% himself. I think that he is probably, I don't want to put a percentage on it, but it's definitely less than 100%. So Charles Cross, there's a, it's just kind of a, a bad luck season for him. It's just one of those years where he's going to get by the best that he can, and I don't think we can expect much more than that. So... Uh, that's your limited participants. And then we got a bunch of guys who were full participants. And um, there was some definite good news here. JSN was a full participant, so Wednesday looks like it was just kind of a rest day as much as anything. K9, full participant, which is a big relief because I expressed some concern about K9 yesterday. But the fact that he's already up to full participation is a very good sign. You've got Jaron Reed, the tooth injury. I mean, it, it was something that was just going to last that one day, so that's really good news. Lockett, not that I was super concerned, but the hamstring injury seems like it's starting to go away. He's able to participate in practice more. 
Trey Brown, full participant. The toe injury is starting to clear up a little bit. We're also seeing Derek Young start to really ramp up here. He will be available in the near future for us if we want to use him. And of course, Derek Hall. Now, Derek Hall was a full participant yesterday as well, but the fact that he's still a full participant means everything is looking good. So he should be available on Sunday, and it doesn't seem like the shoulder injury was a big deal. Also, not even listed here is Kenny McIntosh. So that's also good news. Um, I uh, By the way, Abe Luke is not listed here because he's not practicing yet. It looks like he's going to practice next week. That's the plan, it looks like. So, uh, yeah, a lot of good news here. Uh, we also had Jamal Adams and Noah Fant as listed as full participants, but I wasn't terribly worried about that. I think that was uh, just kind of the very obvious direction this was going to go. So, a lot less bumpy today, and hopefully tomorrow things get even better, but uh, this full participant list is big. Okay, now we go over to the commander side of things, and this is going to be quick because uh, they are... The players that the Commanders have lost are players that they have lost because they traded them. Uh, Chase Young, Montez Sweat are gone because they traded them. But injuries, Emmanuel Forbes Jr. has another full day of practice. Curtis Samuel has a limited day of practice. Looks like both guys are going to play. That's really what I can say about that. And there's nothing else here. The guys they had listed yesterday were out because of personal reasons or rest days. Those guys are fine. So this is about as healthy as you can be for a team in week 10 of an NFL season. So yeah, pretty much all the interesting stuff is happening on the Seattle side. And the good news is things are starting to clear up. I am worried about Brooks, like I said. I am worried about Bradford. Um, I am aware that Cross is probably well under 100% right now, and it's probably affecting his ability to play. But this is definitely a step in the right direction here. And again... You wouldn't expect an injury report in Week 10 to ever look like this. This is very rare. This is a very special thing. Shout out to whoever is in charge of strength and conditioning for the Commanders this year. It seems like he's doing a pretty good job. But uh, yeah, that's your injury report for Thursday. We will learn more tomorrow. Uh, see you guys later. I will be streaming with the Hawks Nest tonight. Uh, also, of course, porting it over to Facebook if you want to watch over there. But uh, yeah, we'll be talking about this upcoming Washington game. I'm glad we have more information about who we're actually going to have available for this game. So yeah, more information is always good. And uh, tomorrow we'll be telling. But uh, yeah, hope to see you guys tonight as we're going to talk about this Commanders game, see how the Seahawks can bounce back. Might be doing some Twitch streaming tonight. We got to get back to, to uh, Starfield. And uh, if I do, hopefully I will see you guys there. Go Hawks.